week I've challenged myself to see if I can learn and work on a few basic mini ramp tricks done in the opposite stance. So this could be fully switch, which for me is to have my right foot forward just behind the bolts and my left foot on the tail in the goofy stance. Now I feel I might have a bit of a head start riding right foot forward as I come from sports like windsurfing and also kite surfing, where you go one way, left foot forward, my regular stance. Then to get back the other way, you got to flip around and go right foot forward. So transferring some of this psychology into my skateboarding seemed like a worthwhile pursuit. I thought it'd be a really fun challenge to go right back to the start of my mini ramp career, recreate the joy of getting a simple trick, that buzz of having a breakthrough, by learning those first tricks in the order that I learnt them, only in the opposite stance than I usually ride. I think my rationale here is to get more comfortable riding backwards, either in the switch stance or in the fakey stance or with my foot on the nose. And hopefully that will build more consistency into my mini ramp runs. I'm also hoping that this concept of essentially going back to being a beginner will help me identify the nitty gritty of these foundational tricks by comparing my regular stance to my goofy stance versions. I can then tidy up my style and really hunt out any inconsistencies in my technique. First up, time to start at the start with the drop in. Now I have to say, this seems like a simple one, but trying to drop in switch, oh my gosh. If you want to remind yourself how terrifying it is to be a beginner, just try dropping in round the wrong way. Whew, even standing over it is pretty intimidating. To give me that full switch stance experience, I've got a directional board, so I switch that round so the tail is on the coping as it would be for my regular drop in. Set up on the board, and I found a good tip for getting this to work is to use a rhythmic technique, which is foot on the tail of the board, push it onto the coping, and then stand forwards and go. I found with these switch stance versions, I'm at a slight academic advantage because I've already been through the pain of learning them the first time. So it helped me remember the fundamentals, things on the drop in like committing your weight really far forward, a lot further forward than you think. Also having the academic knowledge of what it's like to spoon off the back and knowing that that is not the way forward. Next up was a rock to fakie. I've been working on my rock to fakies. I've been trying to get the finer points dialed in. So coming up the ramp, clear the front wheels so it doesn't bang off the coping, rock the wheels onto the deck, and then coming back in, clear the wheels right over. Also been trying to do it with a little bit of style, so not too much flailing arms. So for the switch version, I utilize my switch drop in and then coming at that coping, whew, that is pretty scary in the switch stance, having to think about how to execute the rock fakey. Now I can do the fakey rock, which is essentially the same trick, but your feet are in a different position for the fakey rock. So this is a switch rock fakey. Coming in, I had to remember to pull my front foot up, which used to be my back foot, and clear the wheels, and then coming back in, that was terrifying. So I had a couple of non-starters where I just jumped off the back, exactly the same as when I learned the rock fakey the first time round. And then when I did commit to coming back in, I found I spooned off, Whew! and that was because I didn't commit my weight far enough back into the ramp Exactly the same as when I first learned the rock to fakie, it all came flooding back. I found it interesting that I still made the same mistakes as I did first time round, but as soon as that academic knowledge clicked in and I remembered, hold on a minute, you've got to commit your weight back into the ramp, it really helped me then turn that into motor skills. And I found I started to get a couple of quite nice rock to fakies coming back in. The thing I found really tricky here was to maintain the switch stance. So not only is that left foot on the tail, right foot behind the bolts, it's also the hips 
and the shoulders and the head looking in the direction of travel and then remaining in that stance coming backwards. What I was tempted to do was to go into it, switch, and then come out of it fakie. So I was just turning my body around and then riding basically regular with my front foot on the tail and my back foot behind the bolts. If we examine both versions in a mirror image format, it does expose the inconsistencies in my switch technique. And you can see my body starting to switch round at the end. So that's something I can work on. Next thing was to put it to test by just doing a rock to fakey, fakey rock, backwards and forwards on the ramp. And I found that was just a lot of fun, very simple idea, but just to go rock, 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 backwards and forwards. <laughs> Next up, the tail stall. I've been working on my tail stalls lately as I haven't been happy with my general form and style. I find my back leg is too straight and I find that I'm stalling for a little bit too long up there. So I've been working on trying to keep my body weight more inside the ramp, keep my knees a little bit softer. I've also been experimenting with getting low and grabbing the board on the nose with the front hand. And to really egg the pudding, I've been putting in a backhand grab in preparation for trying out the crail slide. To get this to work, I find I need to be way lower than I think I need to be. But once you get down there, the whole tail stall feels a little bit more secure and relaxed. So trying out the tail stall and the switch stance, <laughs> it all came flooding back, missing the coping, or oh, landing on your hip on the coping. Oh my gosh. When I eventually remembered to pump up and stand on top of the coping, I managed to get into the stall and then it was just a case of getting into the stall and then coming back in. I also experimented with a little hand grab. Examining the mirror image footage, you can see the inconsistencies in these two again. So taking this one into the end-to-end -end mirror image drill, I find it helpful to rework the stance so there's basically a foot on the nose and a foot on the tail. This allows me to go up into a tail stall and then back down into a nose stall. Again, this seems like a simple concept, but little things please little minds. And I really enjoyed going backwards and forwards, nose stall to tail stall. Just a little word of warning though, with this stance with one foot on the tail, one foot on the nose. If you do try and bail, the board will try and come with you because you've got weight on either end and you can't get your feet off the board. It's just stuck there. So what I found in the past is the best bail is to jump off of both feet simultaneously when you want to bail. If you try and step off, <laughs> I ended up falling backwards, got a couple of nasty grazes on my helmet. So next up, I was keen to try out some axle stalls. The first one I tried was the fakey backside axle stall. So coming in fakey, spin backwards, lock the two wheels on the coping, and then hop her back in. Obviously, when you're gonna do this round the other way, you can view it as a switch version. I think I'm more thinking about spinning on the nose here and then spinning off of the nose back in fakie as opposed to doing it switch. But that coming back in, whoo hoo, axling back in fakie, that's pretty exciting. And there is a bit of a leap of faith element. It reminded me of the key point of learning the normal axle stall, which is when your back wheel is right up against the coping, toe pressure is the absolute key to not hanging up. So all I needed to do was switch that round in my brain when I was doing the opposite way round version, foot on the nose, loads of nose, foot, toe pressure, and then just lift up my back foot and try and axle back in, keep everything straight and she'll come in. Examining the mirror image footage, you can clearly see there's huge inconsistencies between the two. And I need a lot more practice getting comfortable with axling back into fakey. <laughs> that is pretty exciting. So starting to build in an incremental fashion, next up, the backside 5.0 stall and back in. I really enjoy doing these ones, coming back in, spinning backwards onto the coping, holding it in that 5.0 stall and then coming back in, trying it on the nose. Hoo -hoo! So bringing her in on the nose, 
Again, I'm not thinking of this as a switch version, really. I'm thinking of this as a nose crook, but it does have that element of coming back into the ramp fakie. I would say it's a bit trickier than the axle stall version because you are right up in the air. So it's just a little bit more scary. So coming back in, it's all about that toe pressure, really hammering the toe to remain locked on and also allow that heel side wheel to swish over the coping. So at this point, it was time to up the ante. I've always wanted to try an axle back in front side to fakie. Oh my gosh. And coming back in, the key point is the heel side pressure on the back foot pushing against that wheel locked on the coping. Again, the heel side pressure releases the toe side wheel and stops the hang up when you come back in. So trying this one round the other way, you're gonna be coming in with your foot on the nose, pivoting on the nose wheel, locking in, and then it's time to come back in backwards, fakie first. <laughs> that is pretty intimidating. I found the barrier to entry here for me was the fear factor. So committing to that first one back in was the key breakthrough moment when I did obviously all how broke loose. But as soon as I took the slam and realized it wasn't too bad, I could go into these with gay abandon. I found the key thing was to try and remember all the key points from doing them in my regular stance and try and transfer that and flip it onto the other side of my body so all I was thinking about coming back in was keeping that heel pressure to avoid the hang up and also keep my knees bent. So as I came in, I had a nice cushion. So having got used to coming up and stalling on the coping, both on the nose and on the tail and coming off of the coping, both on the nose and on the tail, I found I could shuffle these around. So coming into a backside stall, I could come up fakie, stall on the back foot and then come back in off of the nose foot fakie. I could also come in regular, pivot up onto the coping on the nose foot and then come back in regular. And for the front side stall, I could come up on the nose foot and then pivot and come back in to regular. There's all sorts of combinations here and it's quite helpful to work out what's going on if we view this in our mirror image format. To finish up, I had time to try a few spinning tricks. One of my favourites is the half cab rock to fakie. So coming in fakie, spin with your front side to the coping, rock the board and come back in. The opposite way round version to this is to come in with your foot on the nose and then spin and then come back in. Again, I'm not thinking of this one as a switch one. This is really a nose version. But if we examine this in the mirror image format, you can indeed see they're essentially a mirror image of each other. It does expose, again, my body position being different for the switch nose version. I was also interested to see how different the style was for each of these versions. Obviously, I'm not as experienced at the backwards nose version, so therefore my arms are flailing about, whoo, hanging on for dear life. For my regular half cab rock, I've practiced that a lot more so that gave me a little bit of insight into how my style could be developing organically just through riding the board, practicing and becoming more comfortable with the trick I'm doing. So taking this 180 to the next level, I wanted to try it as a pivot. So coming up, placing the truck on the coping, swishing the wheel across the coping onto the rock and then coming back in. I actually find these a little bit safer than doing the normal rock because you've got somewhere to aim your wheels and your trucks. And as long as you stand on the coping with confidence, everything seems to happen quite nicely. It gave me confidence to try the backside version, which is coming in and spinning backside. So the mirror image version of that one is to come in on the nose and pivot with your foot on the nose backside. Hoo -hoo. That is pretty exciting feeling to be spinning blindside backwards. I found the key for both of these is to try and stand up on the coping and also keep your knees bent. Try and keep that back leg right up under your arse. Overall, I got a real buzz out of these sessions. I find that exceeding my expectations and progressing gives me the most stoke out of any aspect of skateboarding. So moving forward with this idea, I came up with a few ideas I'd like to pursue in future sessions. 
I tossed around the idea of a switch front side Smith. Got pretty close, but no cigar. I also tossed around the idea of trying to do a fakey kamikaze. So that's coming into a nose stall and then leaping back into the ramp right foot forward. Again, got close on a couple of attempts, but just ran out of steam. And on the last attempt, whoo, off the back, tweaky ankle, let's call it a day. Don't tell me, mum. Well, that's it for this video. In the interest of full disclosure, I feel I have to say I found this pretty demanding and pretty humbling. Needless to say, I was humbled left, right and centre. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. Also, for regular updates, follow me on Instagram at John Bishop Skate. As ever, my name's been John Bishop, and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate. <laughs>